In this video, we will learn how to send data from Webflow, for example, newsletter signups, to SendGrid, where you can manage your newsletter subscription contact list. We will be using Rowy for this purpose. Rowy is a low-code platform that allows you to manage your data on a spreadsheet-like UI and build connectors between any applications. Let's get started. First, you need to set up Rowy. You can do this easily from the Rowy website. On Rowy, you can create your first workspace, connect it to a database, and build any necessary automation. Full setup instructions are available in the link provided in the description. Okay, let's start by creating a table. We have pre-built tables available with Webflow and SendGrid, but for this demo, let's create one from scratch. On this table, we will first create a new collection, giving it the name Newsletter Signups. Optionally, you can add it to a section by selecting an existing one or creating your own. Let's say we add it to the marketing section. Next, you can add a description if you would like, and then click Create. This table has two options. You can either input data from a CSV or a JSON file, or you can create your own table by adding columns. For now, let's create a new table. Add a column titled Email, and then set its type to Email. This is where we'll store the email addresses of people who sign up. Then, let's add another column to store the time at which the signup happened. We have a pre-built column called created at that we can use for this purpose. This will enable auditing on this table. Alright, so we have these two columns to store the information, anytime someone signs up. We can send information to a table in Rowy from Webflow by using a webhook. To create a basic webhook, go to the webhook section. Rowy will give you a webhook URL, which you can use to send data from other applications. Alright, let's name this webhook Webflow to Rowy. And hey, if you want to double check the incoming message or add some conditions, you can do that. But for now, let's skip that. In this section called Parser is where the magic happens. Here, you can write any piece of code or logic in JavaScript or TypeScript to define what you would want to do to the incoming webhook data. Here, we have a default logging statement. We can update it, a new signup is received. Then the rest of the code we leave as is as we want to store all the incoming information body as well as the created timestamp in the table. Let's click Add and Save, and this deploys the webhook instantly and ready to use. Let's copy this webhook URL and go to Webflow. As you can see here in the bottom footer, we have an input text box, where a user can enter their email and sign up for the newsletter. This typically gets stored in the Webflow CMS, which is not convenient. Let's change this to send a message directly to Rowy and save it on Rowy table instead. To do this, on the button click, we can add an action to post a message to our webhook URL. So, let's add this URL that we copied. Then, let's save and publish this website. Let's give this a try. I add some email and sign up. Now, it redirects the page to the webhook URL and says OK, which is not what we expect when we go and check the Rowy table you can see the data has come in, but there is no email. There is only the created at timestamp of when the submission happened. So let's fix two things. To fix the redirect, go to the page settings, and if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see a space for adding code in a section called before the body tag. Here, you can add a piece of code. We'll be posting the link to this code in the description of this video that you can copy and paste. In this code, you first need to give this form an ID. Let's call this Newsletter Signup. And for each of the data points within the form submission, in this case, just an email, it will aggregate the form data and send it to the action URL, which is the webhook URL that we have already added. And based on the response we get, which was the message OK that we were getting in case of success, it updates the website accordingly. So, if the signup is successful, then we show the success messages of the form and hide the failure message part. And if the response is an error, we do the opposite, which is hide the success part and show the failure part. Okay, you don't need to change any of these keywords as these are auto-assigned by Webflow. But, this form ID is something we need to add. So, if you go back to the form component here, you will see this ID section here where you need to give the form the same ID that we used in the code, which is newsletter signup. 
Okay, now that the ID is set, you can verify your success and your failure message. Okay, so let's give it a publish. So I go back to the website, enter an email, click sign up, and there you go. You can see the success message right here on the screen instead offer a redirect like before. If we go to the rowy table, you can see a new row was just added with the latest timestamp. The email is still missing, but if you go to the side panel, and click here, you'll see that this data is actually stored on your own Firestore data, where you will see the email as well as the created date. As you can see, email here is all capital, whereas in our table, it's labeled email in small case. This is because Rowy adds the data to your Firestore database, but doesn't show it on the table as it needs an exact label match. You can solve this easily by going back to your newsletter form and editing this email field name to match that of your table. Okay, let's publish that. Alternatively, you can also create another column called email in all caps for the field name and you will see that the data actually shows up right away as it is indeed stored in your database already. Okay, let's delete this new column and try out the updated website to see if it shows up. So, there you go. The email field gets stored here as you expect. Great, so the data is now coming into Rowy from your Webflow website. Let's see how we can add this data to SendGrid. First, on SendGrid, you need to create a list for storing these contacts. If you do not have one already, create a new list. Here, we have the new signup list, and you need to pay attention to the list ID and the URL here. Now, if you go back to Rowy, all you need to do is create an extension of the basic type. You can name this Add to SendGrid List. And you can see every time a new role is created here as a signup from that flow, we want a piece of logic to run. Now we have code blocks that you can use, or you can create your own. So for the purpose of this, I have already copied to my clipboard the senders list. Additional code block. This will also be linked in the description so you can easily add them. As you can see here, it says every time a new role is created, it just first checks it. The raw email is not empty. And if so, it adds them to the Syndric list. Here is the list ID that you need to supply. It's currently empty. So let's go ahead and grab this list ID and Paul in it here. Okay, so now let's add and deploy it. It takes a few seconds for this build to complete. Okay, now it's complete. So let's give this a try. Let's go back to the website and add an email and sign up. Now, if we go back to the newsletter table, you will see that this has been added to the table and this triggers the extension to add the email to SendGrid. You can verify this by clicking the logs here. As you can see, it says extension body has started. You can also refresh the list on SendGrid and check if the email has been added to your contact list. That's it! Now you can start sending newsletters via SendGrid. Hope you found this video useful! You can add any such forms on your Webflow website, get data in Rowy, and build out connections to other app easily using their APIs. If there's anything else you'd like to see with Webflow and Rowy demo, let us know in the comments below. See you in the next one!